Strategies for Writing Effective Literature Reviews Purpose of a Literature Review The literature review is a critical look at the existing research that is significant to the work that you are carrying out. The purpose includes to provide background information of the subject, to establish importance of the subject, to demonstrate familiarity with the subject, to carve out a space for further research. Characteristics of Effective Literature Reviews Literature review outlines important research trends. It assesses the strengths and weaknesses of the existing research. It identifies potential gaps in knowledge. It establishes a need for current and or future research projects. Steps for writing a literature review. Planning. Reading and research. Analyzing. Drafting. Revising. 1. Planning. As part of planning, you will consider the focus area for the review. With this, you will answer the question of what is the specific thesis, problem, or research question that my literature review will help to define. The answers will enable you to establish a focus that will allow you sort and categorize information needed, and eliminate irrelevant ones. Also, as part of planning, you need to consider the type of literature review you are conducting. By asking what type of literature review am I conducting? Is it theory, methodology, policy, quantitative, or qualitative review? Furthermore, you need to consider the scope of the literature by asking, what is the scope of my literature review? The answers will help you to define the types of sources you will be using. Finally, you will need to consider the academic discipline that your review will be based. This will help to understand the fields of your thesis, which will determine what you include or exclude in the review. 2. Reading and researching. After the planning stage, you will start to collect and read materials based on the conditions of your planning outcomes. While you are reading the materials, your focus will be summarizing the sources by asking, who is the author? What is the author's main purpose? What is the author's theoretical perspective? Research methodology? Who is the intended audience? What is the principal point, conclusion, thesis, contention, or question? How is the author's position supported? How does this study relate to other studies of the problem or topic? What does this study add to your project? 3. Analyzing sources. A literature review is never just a list of studies, but it always offers an argument about a body of research. The analysis occurs on two levels. Analyzing different individual sources based on their claims and argument, and analyzing the sources against the body of knowledge. Four analysis tasks of the literature review. Summary and synthesis. In your own words, summarize or synthesize the key findings relevant to your study by discussing what is known about the immediate area, what are the key arguments, key characteristics, key concepts, or key figures, what are the existing debates slash theories, what common methodologies are used, sample language for summary and synthesis, Normidin has demonstrated. Early work by Hausmann et al. was concerned with. Elzade and Stern compared algorithms for handling. Additional work by Karasawa et al. and Parry et al. deals with. Example of summary and synthesis. Poor behavior in classrooms can have a negative impact on the quality of learning and teaching that takes place. Clark and Davis demonstrated the relationship between types of learning and student behavior. These authors found that behavioral issues were more evident around student-centered activities. This is supported by Wilkins who suggests the organization of tasks at certain times to avoid instances of poor behavior. Collectively, the evidence suggests that teachers need to strategically plan and time the type of activity and learning that takes place in the classroom. Comparison and critique. Evaluates the strength and weaknesses of the work. 
How do the different studies relate? What is new, different, or controversial? What views need further testing? What evidence is lacking, inconclusive, contradicting, or too limited? What research designs or methods seem unsatisfactory? Sample language for comparison and critique. In this ambitious but flawed study, Jones and Wang. These general results, reflecting the stochastic nature of the flow of goods, are similar to those reported by Rosenblatt and Roll. Example of comparison and critique. The critical response to the poetry of Phyllis Wheatley often registers disappointment or surprise. Some critics have complained that the verse of this African-American slave is insecure, imitative, and incapacitated at worst, the product of a white mind. Others, in contrast, have applauded Wheatley's critique of Anglo-American discourse, the revision of literary models. Another example of comparison and critique. The situationist model has also received its share of criticism. One of the most frequently cited shortcomings of this approach centers around the assumption that individuals enter into the work context. Evaluative adjectives. Unusual. Small. Simple. Exploratory. Limited. Restricted. Flawed. Complex. Competent. Important. Innovative. Impressive. Useful. Careful. Analyzing, which is basically putting it all together. Once you have summarized, synthesized, compared, and critiqued your chosen material, you may consider whether the literature demonstrates the topic's chronological development, shows different approaches to the problem, shows an ongoing debate, centers on a seminal study or studies, demonstrates a paradigm shift. Also, once you have summarized, synthesized, compared, and critiqued your chosen material, you would be able to identify what researchers know about the field or subject. What researchers do not know about the field or subject. Why further study is required in the topic or subject. What your own study will contribute to the field or body of knowledge. 4. Drafting, which is basically an overview. To help you approach your draft in a manageable fashion, this section addresses the following subtopics. Organizing. Introduction. Conclusion. Organizing your literature review. You can organize your literature in any of these formats. Topical order. Organize by main topics or issues. Emphasize the relationship of the issues to the main problem. Chronological order. Organize the literature by the dates the research was published. Problem cause solution order. Organize the review so that it moves from the problem to the solution. Introductions. Your introduction will indicate scope of the literature review. Provide some background to the topic. Demonstrate the importance or need for research. Make a claim. Offer an overview or map of the ensuing discussion. Example of an introduction. Strategy is a multi-complex practice with theories of how organization would excel in achieving high level of performance in the markets, and the industry the organization is operating in. However, strategy is a tenuous subject to grasp due to different meaning it holds to different people. Moreover, as a management and a dynamic process that needs to take into account time lags, intervening variables and casualty, strategy is made up of a sequential set of analyses and choices for the purpose of increasing the likelihood of a firm to perform well, and thus should not be a surprise if it attracts the attention of researchers and scholars in the demand for increased and suitable way to combat the economic and market battlefield, which is the essence of the new streams of research. This study will critically evaluate, through the various literature the recent developments in the study of strategy, in the nature of new streams of research and with relevant business examples to reconcile them with the ten schools of thought promoted by Mintzberg et al., in the context of recent organizational reality. 
Conclusions Your conclusion summarizes the main findings of your review. Provide closure. Explain so what? Implications for future research or connections to the current study. Example of conclusion. This study critically evaluated the new streams of research with the view of reconciling it with the 10 schools of thought promoted by Mintzberg et al for coping with organizational reality. Through the review of various literature, it is found that though the 10 schools of thought are trying to provide the true picture of strategic formation as for setting direction, achieving focus and defining organization, yet find favor in a well-defined, stable and perfect industry. However, the result of changing and complex business environment makes the 10 schools of thought less significant in the context of organizational reality. Based on the above fact and the evidence is found in this research in favor of the new streams of research, and with relevant business examples, this research upholds that the new streams of research are more suitable to cope with organizational reality. This is because strategy is a dynamic process that takes into account various variables in solving management or business problems. Also, the influence of the complex environment causes new problems to emerge thus requires new way of strategic formation which triggered the emergence of the new streams of research. 5. Revising. Some tips on revising. Title. Is my title consistent with the content of my paper? Introduction. Did I appropriately introduce my review? Thesis. Does my review have a clear claim? Body. Is the organization clear? Have I provided headings? Topic sentences. Have I clearly indicated the major ideas of each paragraph? Transitions. Does my writing flow? Conclusion. Do I provide sufficient closure? Spelling and grammar. Are there any major spelling or grammatical mistakes? Common errors made in literature reviews. Review isn't logically organized. Review isn't focused on most important facets of the study. Review doesn't relate literature to the study. Too few references or outdated references cited. Review isn't written in author's own words. Review reads like a series of disjointed summaries. Review doesn't argue a point. Recent references are omitted. Writing a literature review in summary. As you read, try to see the big picture. Your literature review should provide an overview of the state of research. Include only those source materials that help you shape your argument. Resist the temptation to include everything you've read. Balance summary and analysis as you write. Keep in mind your purpose for writing. How will this review benefit readers? How does this review contribute to your study? Be meticulous about citations. At Talent and Skills Hub, you can be supported by our instructors, academic skills advisors, and mentors for sessions on quality academic writing and study skills. You can book an appointment for one-to-one -one or group tutoring through our website, tshub.com.